Well, I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of uh, give a bit of an overview of what we looked at today. And um, you know, I, I want to stress two points before I get into the slides. One is um, you know, the great variety of things we saw here today, the you know, great variety of techniques, the great variety of geological models, applications that were on display here. That's, I think that's great. I was talking to Doug about it at, uh, at coffee, and um, you know, we do really neat stuff. We apply science to geologic problems. Uh, we create wealth. I mean, just that last talk, was a billion dollars worth of wealth found there. You know, probably today, you saw hundreds of billions of dollars worth of wealth that we created, not out of this room, but, you know, overall, uh, uh, geophysicists working on these problems create wealth. And that's, you know, that's a great thing for society. Plus, we, you know, we find groundwater, uh, environmental problems, uh, oil and gas, uh, geotechnical applications, hazards from earthquakes, and so on. Uh, I was just thinking when I saw the earthquake, uh, or saw the, uh, uh, the volcano one, I was thinking, well, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting to be able to map that volcano up so accurately and help them predict and understand uh, what the hazards are. And I was thinking, it's a good thing we don't have this in, Vol in Vancouver. And then I thought, wait a minute, we do. <laughs> We got Mount Baker, another volcano that's quite close. So we do uh, we do good stuff, and it's it's shown on display here today. So I'm going to go through a little bit of this uh, kind of a review of what uh, what we looked at, and uh, secondly, I want to uh, talk about 3D versus 2D because that's a, a particular uh, interest of mine, and I think this was shown quite nicely with the seismic talk today, as well as the uh, EM and IP. Lots of people are doing 3D inversions, but there's 3D acquisition that we have to talk about in the, in the mineral sector. Is this working? Yeah. Okay, so I produced, uh, I, I did this slide three days ago, and then uh, updated it maybe a couple days ago on the basis of the abstracts that I was given. So there may be some mistakes in this because you know there's other things we talked about today that I didn't realize. But first of all, uh, various geophysical methods were, were discussed today, and various geological applications. We've seen gravity. We've seen magnetics, airborne and ground. We've seen electromagnetics, airborne and ground. We've seen magnetometric resistivity, IP resistivity, seismics. The applications in mineral exploration, gold, <coughs> diamonds, nickel, PGE, copper, lead zinc, I missed the silver, sorry, uranium, oil and gas applications, groundwater, and geotechnical. So that's, that's quite an impressive list uh, of, of things that were covered today. Now I'm going to step through the various speakers here, what they were talking about and what it applies to. First, Nick, gravity and magnetics of nickel, um, uh, soji and uh, electromagnetics diamonds, and it goes on. Peter with magnetics, uh, electromagnetics and gold, uh, Scott Napier talking about that, uh, IP resistivity, looking for copper deposits, SIDS, and so on. Thomas talking about gold exploration. Well, actually, platinum group from the, uh, uh, the structure in South Africa. Uh, more electromagnetics applied to copper. Magnetics and gravity applied to a jig pentagon calling that. That's the uh, a volcano, you know, the, the hazard situation. Seismics to oil and gas. Uh, Jonathan talked about uh, IP resistivity applied to groundwater, but there's also had a geotechnical application there to, uh, to that particular problem. Electromagnetics applied to groundwater, um, Deacon's talk. So we're building up quite an impressive array of uh, talks here. The last one, electromagnetics applied to oil and gas exploration. Uh, Dave talking about all these techniques applied to uranium exploration. But if you, st if you start to add in all the other applications for gravity applications. Uh, gravity can be used for all these different things. Magnetics 
can use lots of different things. I think you can see where this is going. You end up with quite a nice little demography. That's called demography. <laughs> a nice little nest of uh, uh, techniques and applications. In other words, we can just about solve any problem, any geological <laughs> problem at all if we put our minds to it. So I think it's a you know it's a great science to be in. It's, it's a great time to uh, you know it's great to talk about it. Now the next thing I want to uh, go over is uh, 2D versus 3D. And uh, this was brought up by uh, Norm Stock and also Jonathan's and, uh, and some of the others. I'm just, uh, this is a, a, a little um, exercise carried out by uh, John Cutty, their company. And it was uh, showing the difference between uh, collecting data in 2D, collecting data in 3D, and what it leads to. It's just a synthetic model, it's very simple. It might take a few minutes to go through it. So this is a, a block model, and you can see the block in the middle there. And, uh, and two lines were surveyed, or synthetically, two lines of resistivity were collected across that, uh, but just missing the block. And of course, you see it, because you see it sideways, right? So you apply a 3D inversion, and this is the, this is the final result of the 3D inversion, for that little block and you end up with a, a much larger block. You end up with false anomalies. You end up with um, anomalies on the side, you end up with a little false anomaly over in this line, and you end up with um, a decrease in the middle. So that's not a really good solution. It really is better to apply, if you're doing a 3D inversion on data, it's better to have 3D data. Uh, one cheap way to do it is you do the three lines across here, but then you also do a series of lines across the other way, more 2D. Well, that, uh, that helps a little bit, but, um, and you do get a model where it, uh, roughly where it is, but it's a pretty ugly looking model. Now, to collect, what the point I would make is that we really need to be collecting 3D data like they've been doing in the oil business. They've been doing it like they, we said, the early 80s, for Pete's sakes. I mean, that's 30 years. And we're still just, we're just catching up to that now in the mineral sector. Oh, that's the model. Sorry. So this is a rather complex model. This is a, another groundwater problem. So it's a synthetic again. That's the model John put together. And then uh, he uh, synthetically created 3D data. So this is from a, a whole series, of just exactly what Jonathan showed, a whole bunch of different dipoles spread out over the whole area and shooting in between them and collecting in every different possible direction. And this is a uh, display of the data itself, actually, the synthetic results from that uh, little model experiment. This, the black dots actually show uh, where different dipoles would plot on that particular section. So this could be dipoles coming in all sorts of different directions, like a rose diagram, which we saw earlier. And the point to this is that you end up with a much nicer inversion rub result. Duh. I mean, everybody in the room realizes this fact, but it really, uh, I think it, it, it emphasizes the fact that we really need to be uh, collecting 3D data in order to interpret uh, and do inversions in 3D. Uh, final note here is that uh, you saw this earlier, we got this uh, uh, short course uh, at the Roundup this year, and also please come out to the breakfast and uh, hear uh, Dr. Unsworth from the University of Alberta and shows beautiful slides. And uh, a couple of other things, these badges. Uh, make sure you take your beer tickets out and put them in your pocket. Right? Everybody take your beer tickets out, put them in their pockets, and then leave these on the desk as you uh, leave out uh, where you pick them up so we can use them next year. Ah, ah, sorry. Same, same person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you broke it? You The PowerPoints will be um, sent. Sorry, what was that? Ross, the, we're going to distribute the where permission was given PDF of, PDFs of the PowerPoints to the delegates. So, uh, are you going to do that by email, Ross, probably with the link? Yeah, we'll distribute it on the website. Right, the PDFs, 
of these PowerPoints will be on the website. Eventually, it'll take a little while to do it. Uh, uh, the reception is at Moose's Down Under, which is one block down Seymour, downhill towards the uh, Broad Inlet, and then left for two blocks on Fender. Can't miss it. Uh, anything else? Thank you all for coming, and uh, I thought it was a great session. Thanks.